Hello everybody and welcome to episode 25 of my Stellaris Roman Utopia Let's Play. Now in the last episode, a fallen empire has just woken up and it sent the Roman Empire into a bit of chaos. We don't really know exactly how to deal with it. Should we preempt the attack and rush them now? Has too much time passed? How, how big are their fleets going to be? What exactly, what equipment are they going to be fielding? Will the other fallen empire wake up? Etc, etc. And it's causing us a few issues. Now, the Senate have been very good at debating this. I've been away a, a few days, so apologies for the, the lack of episodes for a couple, I think I missed two days where I should have had episodes out. Apologies for that, but we should be back on track now for the next little while. And, uh... So yeah, essentially, in those few days I've read through, I've just caught up today on all of the comments that people were mentioning and in all the Discord conversations of how we should deal with them. So basically, a Fallen Empire that's attacking us here are the Kel Azan Fanatics. They probably have around a 100k fleet, um, maybe more, and it's going to pretty much continue to build as they push their borders out, which they haven't done yet. They haven't gone to war with anyone just yet, um, but the only two options they really have is the Roman Empire ourselves, the Interstellar Rakthala Commonality, which basically have no fleet. We fought them in a war recently and they've just just—they've got absolutely nothing. They're pathetic uh, in comparison, which is a d damn shame because I always wanted to have them as an ally. Or they could maybe reach around and try to get to the Tumbata Eradicators. Um, again, they're a vassal of us. We've got, if we switch to diplomatic map mode, we can see the Uvzant Imperium, the Vagoros Empire, the Wasari Hive, and the Tumbata Eradicators. The yellow is all of our vassals. The orange are just kind of neutral to us, <clears throat> and the green is ourselves. So we're quite a big, big boy, a big player in this galaxy. And, but that, you know, it's not all about size. Um, the Kalazan fanatics have way superior tech, and their fleets are going to be bigger than ours. So it's all, this episode's going to be all about trying to figure out what we should do. I've read through a lot of comments, and we haven't really come to any kind of consensus about what we should do. However, what I am seeing a lot of is we should wait for them to attack us and we should be very defensive and, you know, fight them within our own fortresses. So I've we've built a fortress here in the last one called the Hadrian. Now I've done a little bit of reconfiguring how the Hadrian's going to work. We've got the regular Hadrian here, which is going to focus on using medium marauder missiles and gamma lasers. They've got a range of, um, I believe, what's the range? Uh, 50 for the lasers and 90 for the, uh, the missiles, just because they are the... Um, medium variants of these of these particular missiles so i wanted to go with something that was kind of high in range uh decent range anyway i guess that could reach pretty far i was thinking of building just the large sections because that has like a hundred range in fact that might be something i need to do for now i'm going to stick with this but let me know if you think that is something that it might be more important to do that and i'll tell you why so we're going to go with something called the starfish method. There's, there's much more trained, professional, cool ways to do this. I'm going to do a pretty simple version of it where you basically build a defense station roughly around the center of a star. And that will be this different one. It won't be the same one as this. This will be the Hadrian inhibitor. Now the Hadrian inhibitor has a subspace snare. So it means that any fleets that jump into the system will be automatically pulled into the right into the fortress, basically. And so I've got a lot of short range weaponry it's very short range but hopefully they'll be able to fire quite a lot their cooldowns are quick they'll do good damage all around the board to um basically shields and armor and everything they can think of and there'll be also a lot of point defense to fight off any strike craft they have um, because fallen empires tend to have fairly just big battleships that churn out loads of strike craft um so hopefully hopefully this will work against it i'm not too sure i think we'll be focusing on getting better barrier to point defense and better disruptors just to completely destroy their shields. Now, while they jump into the center of a galaxy and that happens, or a center of a system, and they get pulled to that, um, all of the other ones, we're going to build a few other fortresses around it that will hopefully, maybe just around this area here, especially with these two planets, and hopefully keep our fleets here. Now, each one of these will have 5.7k uh, kind of fleet power, and they'll be able to fire in on the, the, the fleet that's going to be stuck here. So, what's going to happen is, fleet jumps here, gets stuck here, starts heading automatically kind of heading towards our space stations to fight them, and our other fortresses start just laying into them. So our other fortresses will have longer range weaponry, much better range weaponry like I was showing you, and uh, heavier defenses and everything, and they will focus on healing our troops that are in there, and then also reducing the fire rate of the enemy um, if they come into it. So if they start moving in here, they can't fire as fast, our boys are getting defensive buffs, and hopefully that's as good as we can do. So I'm going to be pinning a lot of this down on Vulcan. Uh, we might do something similar to Sol, just because that is where Terra is, our home. 
Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So I've set this to be upgraded. Um, so it'll be upgraded to be the latest form of Hadrian. And we're building another one over here, and then I'll build an inhibitor here. So we'll have two. Uh, we'll, I, eventually, then, if we can get another one maybe here, it'd be great. Um, we've got, at the moment, our fleet strength is 30.8k. And then we've got another secondary fleet of 38.7. Now, we've had a few comments, and it'd be good to read up out a couple. Um, I think one in particular was Fira Rhodes. Uh, let's just see where that was. Here we go. So, um, my Imperator, fellow console, pro consoles, etc., etc., um, I've had a plan formulated for our fleets. Um, my first plan is the Naval 8421. When we build up new ships in spaceport, we should ensure that we build eight corvettes, four destroyers, two cruisers, and a battleship, and then scale that up. So I've actually been trying to do this. Um, the uh, fear has said that, like, oh, we've just been doing it whatever way. And that's kind of true. We, ha we have been just building kind of reactionary, but I have been trying to always build more corvettes than we have cruisers, than we have uh, destroyers, and etc. <clears throat> So I remember, as I think I said in the last episode, like this one is battleship heavy. We've got 13 battleships, barely any cruisers. So I'm trying to like beef up the cruisers. We need at least 20, um, you know, by her math or his math or whoever. Um, we need 26, you know, it'd be 13, 26, 40, 52, and then 104. That's a lot of Corvettes. So I've been focusing on the bigger ships just for now because we're kind of going to need the bigger ships to fight the battleships. The Corvettes are great for distracting the big ships. Um, and we definitely need them, but I think priorities will lie with the higher firepower for now. And then as we get more minerals, we'll build mm -hmm. on that. So let's let time play, see how things go. We're going to be waiting to see what this Fallen Empire does and see if another one opens up and wakes up and decides to have a war in the heavens and attack one of the smaller nations. Um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much all we've got going on. Um, I've kind of got a lot of our planets doing, doing some orders, building up their fleets or the spaceport so that we can get fleets coming in from all the complete. different places we need to. Uh, as well as that, we have a colony ship um, that's just entered the system complete. of Joinium. And we're looking to colonize this planet for 600, uh, what do you call it, influence. So this will give us a little base out all the way out here, um, ensuring that the Roman Empire will always survive even if complete. it falls to a fallen empire, which I'm sure that won't happen. But you never know. So we gotta just plan for every every occasion, and there's actually some good research and resources out here. So that's why I wanted to head out here, um, and hopefully maybe build along this arm somewhat. Ah, the Maharin Karin. So this is um for those who may not have caught up on the series, this is basically flora that's giving people a hallucinogenic effect and a high uh, on this planet, and it just keeps keeps coming back to us with problems. Uh, while productivity is no longer declining on the planet, communications between the colony and Fitiver Prime and the capital on Terra are breaking down. Senior officials on Pitiver Prime are growing increasingly distant, and our clerics are explaining that even relying simple or relaying simple directives is becoming ex an exercise in frustration. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to deploy an administrative task force, Code Move. Um, I'm going to do this because I've, from reading this, it sounds like they might actually even break away from the Empire, and that's something I really don't want. So we'll do this. It'll reduce their happiness, but it'll make them work a little harder. Uh, so what have we got? We've got Pheromone, the first stage, Pheromone, the second stage, Pheromone, Workaround, Pheromone, third stage, Pheromone, fourth stage. So it's just a whole load of stacking <laughs> effects. I don't even know how it's all playing out. Uh, let's continue playing. So we're up to 40k now on this one. So eight battleships. I mean, what we could do is combine both fleets. I don't know if that's a good idea, though, or not. Um, it might be a good idea for the type of enemy we'll be facing. They're going to just have one big fleet. They're not going to be splitting fleets. I don't think. So we could do that. We do have a separate commander in each one. We still have Consul Tiberius Bellum and we have Iacovus Library of Rosius on this fleet. And by the way, Iacovus did a great job on the Discord. Um, I haven't replied to them, but they've, he's given a huge amount of messages in there for kind of what he thinks we should be doing tactically in terms of the Empire. And we're going to be System following that a tiny complete. bit, but not completely. Uh, and it's just too, a little bit too detailed to go into now. So we're going to upgrade this as well. And we've got our construction ships out here. So we want to build a military station, a Hadrian inhibitor. We'll put it right... Ah, we have to go all the way out here. That's a shame. It's too close to another one. So it'll complete. inhibit over here. Colonization mm. in progress. Construction complete. So this is the thing I kind of don't understand about the starfish a little bit. I know you're supposed to kind of do it in the center, but even still. We'll put it here. Or could we put it there? 
I think it might actually serve us better to put it all the way out on the edge like this. Maybe. It's closer to our spaceports and closer to our planets in general. So I'm going to do that. Might seem a bit crazy, but... So the, the benefit of having it out here would be that you could obviously build another, maybe... Actually, this system seems pretty small, in a way. I don't know if we'd ever, ever get another defense station in. Alright, we'll just build one there. I think it'll be fine. While in command of the Classes 2 Fortuna, Admiral Iakovus Labor of Rosas has learned to carefully nurse his supplies to significantly reduce ship operating costs. Awesome. Trait gained. Yeah, I think I think you used to be able to build right outside the ring of it, it could reach, but now it doesn't seem like you can do that anymore. Construction complete. Um, well, while that guy's building that, Incoming we could build transmission. another Hadrian somewhere. We don't want the Hadrian inhibitor, we want the regular one. If that's going to be built there, we're probably going to need it. We can't go really any further out. Something like here might work. Yeah, okay, we'll just pop one there. So we've got a little bit of a, a closed circle for the guys that will be coming out this way. Actually, hmm. The thing is, they're never going to really come into this area, right? Because they're always going to be dragged forward. Um, there's a slight chance that they'll be pulled off to the left to fight this one, pulled into the right, but... Yeah, I just don't see them coming out this way. So what I'll do is build one kind of further up. Ah, it's so far away though. Like, would they ever be fighting up here? Probably not. I think that's as good as we can do in this particular system. Let's send this guy off to Sol and we can build another inhibitor out here. Yeah. Problems. Okay. We'll build it right around there. That will inhibit people right to that place and then we can hopefully get another one up here maybe if we can reach it. We'll see. I'll have to speed time up. Uh, what we need to be doing as well is just keep building our fleet up. So, this has a great battleship to... Cruiser ratio, cruiser to destroyer is great, but the Corvettes is lacking. So Terra Nova will just churn out some Corvettes. Six will do, or five. No, it is six. And then um, up here, this needs more cruisers next. So my cruisers have a lot of point defense, which is good. That should help. Um, trade deal offer star charts, no thanks. Marin Karin, upper management betrayal. It seems that the crack team of administrators we sent to Pitiburg Prime in order to set things straight have been turned. Fortunately for us, their plot to do as little work as possible was unsurprisingly sloppy, sloppily executed and easily discovered. Heads will roll, metaphorically speaking, of course, as our last recourse is to dispose of the local government and manage the colony's affairs from the capital. It won't be pretty. So they're just everyone just becomes lazy on this planet. It's just a lazy planet. Causing us little bits of issues every now and then. Let's see how the colony is going. Ah, so when this colony gets built, we'll be out of um, zones. So what we need to do is find a new kind of sector. We could sector this area out here. There is two planets. It's actually three. Construction complete. And there's one down there that we can't sector. It might be worth sectoring these areas then. Or is there anything else I could do? Oh, we're getting a little bit of a bad frame right now that things are things are getting big. If I pause the game, it's fine, obviously, but it's taking a little bit of a hit. So I'm just having a look at, is there anything? I don't want to sector Constantinople. I love it too much. Sol and Vulcan are, shouldn't be either. So I guess we'll just have to bite the bullet and maybe we could just sector this little one planet. Solano? How's it doing? It is mostly built up, so maybe we could create its own... It's a bad idea to create a sector that's just totally by itself, though. But we might have to do that. Alright, I guess we'll do this This one. This one is the one that should be done. Um, I might try and exclude Zeus, because Zeus is kind of important. So, let's create a new sector. Oops. Yeah, we've got loads of... Like, we've got 16 as a limit for sectors. Okay, and then we'll put all this stuff in it as well. Great. That should free us up for a little while. Um. Okay, uh, yeah, that's the thing's fault. God, I feel, I feel like uh, I'm kind of slow because <laughs> I haven't played this in a little while. Look at the 
battleships are so cool, so massive. Um, I haven't really named any of the other ones. We still do have the Julius. Um, what is it? It's Julius and the Gladius, after the previous consoles. Right, we're on 30k on this fleet still. Fleets are building built up. Not much else we can do. Um, we could make a little transfer of, of mineral of uh, energy again from one of the curators, which I think would be a good idea, just to keep things being built all the time. Construction complete. So let's turn off everything else. Select curator, and we'll Colony find the trader Zura Corp. Is our boys? Uh, we'd like to trade for minerals. Uh, yep. Always confuses me when I read that for the first time. Okay, cool. So we've got a lot more to play with now. So let's keep on building. So we still need Corvettes for Terra Nova. And this one still needs destroyers. Is it? Oh no, it's cruisers. And there's assembly yards here, so they'll be churned out as cheaply and as quickly as possible. Construction now, complete. some people are asking, like, can we look at what the Fallen Empire's ships are? Unfortunately, even if you come into contact with them, you can't make sense of what their ships are. They're just complicated and very futuristic. Um, so while we're like waiting for things to be built and stuff, I'll, I'll read some of the comments. Uh, Victor Becker, someone that we had in previous episodes as well, said, My lord, to deal with the Fallen Empires, I suggest that we fight extremely defensively. Let their fleets come to us and battle our ships in systems with defense stations scattered about. This was the... This was while the we engage, okay. This, while we engage the enemy, they will also be pelted with, by the system defenses. When their fleets are, are beaten and their armies broken, we must destroy every last one of them. We must take their worlds and technology from them to ensure human rule across the galaxy. The Gaia worlds should go to the humans as trophies of the war. Construction I complete. completely agree with that. You have my backing, Senator. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get Research to that stage. Complete. Um, but that's what we're doing. We're essentially just building... Ah, Crystal Forge plating. Hello. Synthetics. Dangerous technology. Kind of lends itself to the sentient AI we got recently. What can we get? So, unlocks citizen rights, artificial intelligence, and citizen rights. Any self-aware machine that fulfills, crit fulfills criteria of possessing true artificial intelligence is to be regarded as an individual. The rights and obligations that that entails... I meant to ask you guys what we should do with this. A synthetic? Holy fuck. So they're just better than human. That's interesting. <laughs> Is it Roman though? That's the question. Well, we don't have to build those pups, but we have the option if we start researching it. Um, do we need strike craft attack speed? Not necessarily. Explosive weapon damage increase could always be good. But I am trying to like increase our research like at incredible rates and this has good research. So our scientists could be just like machines. Maybe. Let's research it. We'll see what people think. Uh, so our remote government on Pitiver Prime is now firmly established. It has met with some success in surpassing the proliferation of pollen bearing plant matter in Kaharin. As well as in eroding the community's acceptance of using it. No small feat considering... That uh, the act is as innocent as smelling a flower. So, we fixed it, I guess. They're not going to be doing that anymore. For now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's get the Plutarch to at least assist research on the ground here. Yeah, it actually does visually help that. Um, I just saw it bump up a, a good, quite a good bit. Right, so our cruiser is still being built. Corvettes. Let's keep churning them out. Um, and while we're doing that, let's get a battleship from Constantinople. Ah, we can't. It's too expensive. Uh, we can always just reduce the amount of these and get one in. Constantinople, battleship, Praetorian lands class, please. So, while our fleets are, are fairly weak, really, in comparison to the Fallen Empires, we do have three vassals. And those vassals will be... Oh, look at that. That's a nice little shape we got going on. So this will be the inhibitor. They'll be like, boop, and they'll be like, oh no, what do we do? And then they'll be like, bong, and they'll start fighting that station, and then they'll start moving off this way, and our ships will be all like, bong, um, and then they'll start like being pulled towards us, and hopefully this is just a huge amount of firepower that will be firing at them. 
Like, would it be worth splitting fleets between the two sides? I don't know. The thing I think I feel I haven't seen the starship thing work or been used before. I've heard about it quite a lot, but I always just think, as soon as a fleet of 100k jumps into an area of 5.1k, surely it just destroys this initial thing and then it just has to move because this is way too far for any of these stations to be able to fire on it. Like this distance to here and to there, these distances, they're equal. But like this ship, even with a full range of 110, I don't know what how many range this is, which would be good to know actually. Um, but there's no way they'll be able to h start hitting what's in here. And they'll just, they'll just destroy this. But it's good to say that, like, at least I know where they're going to be coming from. And if they start moving up this way to fight me, this, this might get some action. I don't know. Maybe people could explain to me more. But it does seem like since they've added the extra further distance, you can't really stack these in systems as well as you could before. Because I feel like you used to be able to get them very, very, very close to each other. Now it doesn't seem quite the same. What is this? The Aura 2 defense station. I'm going to actually complete. disband this. Um, and build another Hadrian. Yeah, one like here and then one there. And then we've got a nice little triangle between the planet and the thing. Oh boy. Ah, yes. Traditions. Oh wow, we're about to get an ascension perk. So, protection racket. Tributaries give you an uh, additional 10% of their income. We don't have any, but we have to get it anyway, I suppose. Cool. Empty assumption perk. So, I'll pause it just now. Engineered evolution. To leave our genetic destiny in the hands of nature is an inefficient and excruciatingly slow process. Why not jumpstart the future of our species? So this is biologically enhancing our, our own men. The flesh is weak. The limits and constraints imposed upon us by our feeble organic bodies are simply unacceptable. To reach our full potential, we must turn to cybernetic implants. Okay, so this is obviously pushing towards being robots completely. Even map, even removing brains. And replacing it with machinery. World Shaper. Oh, atmospheric manipulation. I really wanted that. Um, to carefully shape and alter the ecosystem of an entire planet into something else... It's not so different from an artist sculpting a statue out of clay. This is something I wanted so we could terraform Mars. Is it worth it? Probably not. <laughs> but it's something I wanted to do. Galactic force projection. The fleet is the instrument. So just naval capacity increase. No, that's okay. Don't want that. Defender of the galaxy. Damage to Brithorian creatures, to Unbiden, to Aberrant, and to Vehement. Uh, and to AI rebels. Everyone's opinion is increased. As star nations vie with an one another in petty disputes, sinister forces of unimaginable power are arraying themselves against this all-sentient life. Who will protect us? That's an interesting one to have. Of course, we are we are very worried that at any moment there could be an endgame crisis. Increase your border range. 25% is actually fairly substantial for the size of us. Uh, but I don't think we need it. Galactic contender. Damage to fallen empires, 33%. Damage to awakened empires, 33%. I think we're going to need to go with that. And then we can talk about whether or not we do engineered evolution, uh, you know, robots or psionics. I don't think we can actually go with psionics, it seems. Mind over matter is what we need, but we require the psionic theory technology. Um, same with synthetic evolution. Now, how many slots do we have left? Uh, we've actually loads, so we can keep doing this. Voidborn. Um... Oh, wow, we could get a habitat. So that's actually finally the first thing I've seen from the uh, Utopia DLC. You can build habitat. Space, once seen as a cold and insurmountable barrier, has become a second home to us. More and more, are, uh, more and more of our young, oh, more and more of our young reach adulthood without ever settling foot on a planet. Uh, we can build habitats. Now, I'm not even sure what habitats do, um, but I think you can. it's just like a floating planet above your planet. Uh, but maybe, I don't know. Don't know, actually. I'll have to look into that one as well. Gonna go with Galactic Contender. And then we'll start heavily researching that one. Voidborn is pretty interesting. Uh, Defender of the Galaxy is something I think we should it'd be interested to get. And then maybe decide, are we going to go Biology or are we going to go Synthetics? Um, personally, I would lean towards Synthetics, but I think the Romans would genetically enhance themselves rather than turn themselves into innate machines, if you know what I mean. Now, I don't know. Who knows, you know, really what they would think. But I feel like they'd be more aligned to making themselves hard, like harder, better, faster, stronger, 
rather than replacing their brains, you know, with machinery completely. I think that it might be a step too far. Whereas this is like their natural evolution. They're just becoming better um, as a race and a species. So, uh, yeah, we'll go with Galactic Contender. Um, eventually, obviously, I want to be able to build mega structures. So that's this. Requires the mega engineering technology, Galactic Won Wonders. Um, whether or not we're going to go with... Ah, we actually need to get Voidborn to do Ring Worlds. And we need Voidborn to do... Or Galactic Wonders to do Master Builders, which will increase our mega structure build speed. Damn, they're just so cool. I wish you could get them all somehow. <laughs> Guess you need mods. All right, Galactic Contender it is. Then we've got four left to choose, and we have to be very sh certain of which ones we need. Uh, either way, though, we need to get the Mega Engineering research. So we need to just improve. This research is our highest research for that reason. I've been, you know, piling into my engineering just to make it better and better to get to to reach that stage before like this we just own the whole galaxy and the series ends. Um. So yeah, what was it? Galactic Contender. So. The fallen empires cling to the ruins of their decrepit civilizations, ever fearful of the younger and more dynamic races that surround them. Their time has long since passed. Boom. Boom. Alright, we are now 33% better for fighting them. That's a really good one. Okay, cool. So, a lot to think about. I'm actually going to put up a vote. Hopefully you'll have seen it by now. The vote will be, should we go down a biological path or should we go down a synthetic path in the next Ascension Park? And furthermore, should we work towards ring worlds or just regular megastructures? Because I don't think we can really afford to do both because we'll also need Voidcraft for ring worlds. So ring worlds are going to take like two um, Ascension Perks, but I believe ring worlds give you four, four slots when you build them, like four little towns, um, I think. Whereas megastructures harness the ener energy of stars, it's like big buffs to energy, complete. but ring worlds are more like dynamic, you can put anything you want on them, I think. Uh, we've got another attack done. Phase disruptor is awesome, we can replace our previous disruptors with that. Reveals a resource, dark matter physics research will be just increased by 20%, that's, a, that's actually pretty damn significant. Uh, I think I've seen that before and chose not to get it. Iron disruptors though. Hang on, let's see. So we've gotten phase disruptors. It don't phase me. Uh, let's see. Small disruptor. Phase disruptor is level 3. I reckon ion is level 2, so let's not bother. Um, so yeah, we'll just do this right now. Replace these. Excuse me. I have to sneeze. Looks like that set us over the edge for power. Um, so let's get some better power in. And also, so we had crystal infused plating, which is 5%, and now we've got 10%, so let's do that. Now, the reason I've gone with that, just to also further explain what I've, I've been doing, is um, shield capacitor says shield re regeneration. That's what I had on originally, but I thought to myself, would a fortress ever have time to regenerate? I feel like regeneration only occurs when you're out of combat or when combat stops. I don't know if it slows, you know, regenerates as you're fighting. It might do. Let me know if you think it does. But I feel like... It's so slow that it would only ever happen after regeneration, after a fight occurs. And obviously, after a fight occurs with a fortress, it has plenty of time to rebuild itself. Whereas a fleet might need it more dynamically and quickly. Um, so I've decided to remove that. The only one I could see of use is just like straight up hull points. You know, it just takes longer to kill this thing. And stacking it four times, I think, makes it even better. Um, all right. So, in fact, hull points is 21,000. Yeah, look how much it stacks because it's a percentage buff. So it's 15,000. We put this on, it's like 16,500. So that's a 1,500 increase. Oh, so it's 1,500 each time. So it is 10% of the 15,000, the base. So it doesn't stack. But it's still really good. We just gained 6,000 hull points for doing that. So that's, that's like huge. Um, and then we could do regenerative hull tissue where it does regenerate. Um, I don't know if it regenerates during a fight. So... In that respect, it would just slow the fight down if it did. But again, I just think it's better to have 1,500 extra hull points rather than gain 2% increase to hull regeneration. Like, it might not be fast enough. I doubt you're going to get 1,500 from the regeneration, if you know what I mean. So hopefully the math adds up. Um, okay, so let's slap on another fusion reactor or something. Nice. And then we'll have to set those boys to upgrade. So that was... 
pretty much all of these things. Oh, did we just do it on the inhibitor? Yeah, we did. Uh, we need to do it on the other ones as well. Oh, these don't have phase, so... What else do we need? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the same for these. I need to get rid of this. So, let's go. These are the offensive ones, but still, just stacking like the amount of hold points they have, I think it'll be huge. Okay, that's all we need to do for that. Uh, and we'll let time play now, and I'll just start upgrading these things. Let's see how much that was. 48. It's very cheap. Cool. Oh, yeah. So, let's go with this. I'll increase our physics research by 20%, uh, which is going to be quite a lot. Don't ask me what 20% of 630 is. Uh... 120, I think? Okay. Uh, anyway. So we'll jump to jump back to Terra and to Sol and just make sure that this is updated as well. So I think we've got a pretty good little line of defense here. Um, they haven't gone to war with us yet. Oh, we do need to keep increasing. So I do want to just quickly check if we move our army there and move our army there. So we've got about 92 energy on the income at the moment. So that's Borderline, okay. Still afford to get a few more ships in. So, we've got 8, 25. We could do it more battleships in this one. But we could also do it like way more Corvettes. So we'll keep building those. Each Corvette is actually one energy. That's, that's a huge amount when I think about it. And this one, we could still do it more cruisers. <laughs> Can you just build one? All right. Um, so yeah, I think I was saying earlier. I don't know if I finished talking about it, but basically, we have like a. Well, so what are we on now? Like 40, 70, 70 k fleet ish, seventy five maybe. Um, when I finish the sentence, and then we've also got the Wasari Hive fleet. That's a fleet of thirty k. We've got the um, Uzant. Whoa! What the hell? They've completely changed their name. Nation of Fracnir Isitur. Well, they've completely changed their just everything. So they're named after their capital now. That's cool. Oops, on to no more. Um, they've got a small 8k fleet because they've been fighting so much. Uh, 14k fleet on the Vaga Ross. So let's do the math. That's 70, 100k, about 120. Um, and then the Tumbata Eradicators should have about 30k as well, I think. 20, so yeah, 30. So we've got about 140k if we were inflating it a little bit. Maybe 130 if we're not that could come to our aid. Um, the problem is getting them all together at once. Slash and burn, Maharin Kahrin. Our remote governance on Pit of Our Prime continues to be a somewhat awkward but effective arrangement. The council in charge has allegedly secured the loyalty of a faction of our armed forces on the planet. Apparently they prefer staying indoors to breathing in the Maharin Kahrin pollen. The remote government wishes to see these troops mount... Uh, the remote government wishes to see these troops to mount an offensive on the flower, having them erect atmospheric purifiers and wiping the plant from the all urban areas entirely. We should have done this a long time ago. Okay, it's just what's going to happen, I suppose. Ah, we're not construction um, complete. Sitting on the planet properly here. There we go. Construction complete. Um, right, we got another cruiser. Keep cruising. That's cool that the colors are actually differently. It does actually let me know that this is an inhibitor with slightly different effects of what's going on in here. Yeah. So for this one, what I decided to do is quantum destabilizer. The fire rates are going to be bad in each of these three rings. Uh, but this one's the inhibitor as well. For the other ones, which now have a 7.2k firepower, which is really good when you think about that as well. Stack that on top of all that math I was doing. Um... Yeah, they've got a capacitor, the defensive ship, or defensive uh, capacitor fields, which is defensive aura on all of our ships that are in, present inside those rings. So that'll be pretty good. Um, gonna have to build another one somewhere out here. Complete. So, Hadrian class fortress, we'll build it right there. Um, people are also saying, like, stack your... We've got a lot of transports. We've got a lot of transports on Terra defending it. Hopefully it's not going to fall anytime soon. Um, and yeah, people are saying, like, uh, stack your defense... Your God, my God, my head is just gone. 
Stack your defensive legionaries on all of your different planets, you know, really defend the borders on the ground as best you can and see how that goes. So we've been kind of doing that. All right, let's uh, talk to the boys again and see if we can't get um, a little bit more complete. minerals for our energy. Right, let's continue building the ships. 42k and 30k. Ah, I just realized something. These aren't even being combined right now. Uh, I think my corvettes are going moving off to that one there temporarily. So the corvettes to destroyers were pretty good. Destroyers, so we just need a lot more destroyers and a lot more cruisers. So we technically we need 32 cruisers. Ugh. Actually, some of these battleships really should have been heading off to this army, which is why it's all gone wrong. Um, so to make the armies even, what I could do is combine them and then split them. And then we'll get an even representation of both. So I'm going to ask you guys to let me know in the comments. Do you think we should? I think we should have the, the fleet combined just in general. Um, just because Fallen Empires tend to be really big. We can have one big fleet, but we'll see. Uh, it looks like Consul Tiber Tiberius Bellum is the one that's taken over. But we'll get I Iacophus back on. Actually, he was kind of old though. So we've got 2441. So yeah, this means we need about seven more cruisers. And then this will probably be a rally point, or it should be if it's not. Great. Look at that for a goddamn fleet. Look at that. Huge. Roman's biggest fleet ever. 80.9k and growing. Our fleet capacity is absolutely ginormous. We could go crazy with it. I'm tempted to wage a war complete. on the Fallen Empire so that they come in. Um, but I think most people seem to be against that. Um, but I don't like the idea of just waiting. I just feel like they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Their naval capacity is now equivalent. It used to be smaller. They don't like us anymore. Whoa, their borders just did something. Their borders definitely just grew. Please, please let me know if you think we should preempt them and invite them to attack us and then sit in our little area and watch them come up and see what happens. Um, so let's see how things are going. Oh yeah, our new colony. I haven't done anything out here yet. So easy to forget. I wish it was a hard key for doing that. That's pretty annoying. Uh, okay. These guys are doing pretty good. Let's increase. Or just get them building something. Keep everyone doing something. Great. Ah, oh, you bastards. The Chin or Stellar Union just plopped down a... Damn, this is the thing we wanted. Don't make me go to war with you guys. <laughs> that's so annoying. Like, we were here to get all of this stuff. That's that's why. And they just did that. Ugh. Bastards. Defensive pact with the Valmanex Commonwealth. Ugh. Alright, there's not much I can really do about it. Uh, let's get a constructor ship out here anyway to build what we can. Probably get another colony ship to land on this one. The nation of Fracknir Isitur. You brutal totalitarian regime, or your brutal totalitarian regime, will eventually fall and there will be a reckoning. Well, fuck you guys. You're starting to like us a little bit more, so deal with it right you lost just deal with it now we could integrate them that's actually something i've been thinking about should we at this point begin another integration tempting An integration is something like this this one which has a 15k fleet that might be pretty good it costs 600 influence the Vagaros are pretty pathetic. Uh, we wouldn't really gain much from them. We wouldn't get in their fleets or anything. But it's kind of good that they don't actually have much going on there. Huh. A thousand influence. Construction complete. Why the hell is it so high? Why isn't it as high for these guys? The base is 885. The base for these is just because they're so big. 
That's probably why. It doesn't actually say how long it would take. I think it's just saying, like, you could I actually do that? Oh, there we go. It'll take 239 months. And eventually we'll run out because we just we won't have the influence to do that. So we can't really do it to them. Um, however, we can do it for... Tumbata no, I don't want the Tumbata Eradicators. I'm kind of leaning towards doing it for these guys. Whoa, they just gained... Something just... Their borders just touched. Um, I'm tempted to do it for these guys. Because I don't think their fleet is really going to come and aid me that much. But I think I would gain a lot from having their planets. Uh, let's have a just look and see. 599 influence. Blah, 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 blah. I wonder, does it tell me anything more about them? Like, how many pops they have? Ah, 85. 24 synthetics. Oh, they have synthetics. That's weird. And nine empire, and then nine colonies. So nine colonies. What have they got going on? Decent research, some energy. I'm pretty tempted to do that. I think it's time. Um, we, we'll need to save up our influence though a little bit more. But once we get to about 500, then we can do it. Actually, you know what? We can do it now. Um, it, it'll cost complete. five influence per month, which will level us out at, at 0.44. So we'll actually still, our influence will still be going. I'm going to do it. If people object to this, complete. we can, I think we can opt out. Yeah, so we can opt out. And you guys can let me know if you object to that. But I think it's a good move. It'll, it's only nine colonies, so we shouldn't really set our research back too much. Um, and hopefully we can see what they've got, upgrade their fleet. Um, yeah, update their fleet and integrate it with ours and see how it goes. I think, it, I think it'll be beneficial. All right, I know I've been taking things pretty slow, but you know, it, w when dealing with fallen empires, you got to be sure about what you're doing. Um, so what have we got? 24, 46. Uh, we need two more cruisers. Then our cruisers are done. Um, so we'll be on 48. 48 times two is 96. We'll need a lot more destroyers then after that. About 21 more destroyers. God, it's such a glorious fleet. All the while, our physics research is going fine. Our situation log doesn't have anything going on apart from this debris, which is about to go away anyway. I wonder did that fallen empire wake up because we um, cleared off the last of the kind of random aliens out there. All right, Solana Prime. Let's see if they can upgrade their research a little bit. And give us some more minerals, please. Research complete. So, orbitable mind control lasers. I don't even know what I could do with that. It's a module for governing ethics attraction. So, I guess you put it above your planets to make ethics better and lower unrest. It seems pretty sinister building one of those. And commissar squads. Enforcing discipline at an army of state. Oh yeah, this is changing. So it's to do with slave armies. Okay, well, new research. Increase our sector limit. No, we don't need that. Climate restoration. Um, that's something I wanted. We could have got that through the Ascension perk, but we can just research it now, so that's good. Uh, and I think our hydroponics farms are fine. All right, in 23 months, we'll be able to terraform Mars and see what happens. Construction complete. Great, our construction is now complete. 84K. Getting nice fat. Um, so we've got 48. So we need, yeah, like 10 on each. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just get as many as you can. It's one. Great. Good job, Darren. Now, obviously, the reason I do that is so they build evenly at the same time. Alright, um, that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. I'm going to try and keep the episodes just a little bit shorter, uh, so they're more manageable for me to do and upload, and then hopefully for you guys to consume. Um, I don't know if I'll go beyond 30 episodes. We've got at least 5 more to go then. Um, the reason for this being is I'll be going away to E3 uh, in June, and I'll be gone pretty much all of June um, because I'm staying out there. I've never been to America before, so I'm staying out there for 2 weeks, um, so it should be good fun. Um, so from the 10th of June onwards, I just won't be able to do the series for it, like four weeks um, so I'm trying to trying to wrap it up by the time that happens so I reckon episode 30 that's roughly when it'll end but I might do like a special long episode or something just where we can really knock it all out 
if it is dragging on a bit, but we're getting pretty close to the end. The end is, in my opinion, is going to be roughly when we defeat the end game crisis, whenever that happens. Um, so the set of questions I'm going to have for you guys are, just to summarize, the Kel Azan fanatics, right? This is a fallen empire that the borders are growing a tiny little bit every now and then. It looks like they're growing out this way. I don't know if they had that before. don't think they did. Because it looks like it's bulging out that way a little bit. Um, so the question is, do we attack them? If not, tell me why. And uh, for the Senate vote, it's in the Ascension perks, are we going to go down the, the route of synthetics or are we going to go with biology? Then also, we're researching uh, kind of synthetics, I suppose, as a buildable pop. We're about to integrate to get some synthetics as well. Is this a tech we should be going down or should we stay away from it? That's going to probably be a vote. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So we're integrating the Vagoros Empire. Should we do that? Tell me if, if you think it's a bad idea. I think it's, it should be fine. And I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully you agree that the, uh, the setup for this is, is decent. Like we don't need much more. I can't really seem to build much more. If I just have a very quick look. Let's say we got another um, Hadrian complete. class out here. Can't build any further out. Whoa. Construction complete. We can build one there. But my argument is that if they are inhibited to here, they're never going to move out this way. Although they might be pulled to, to do that. Maybe. That's really far out. I didn't know you could go that far out from like the rings. All right, our ships are being built. Uh, let me know if you think, like, I feel like we've got a lot of Corvettes. Do we really need to build more than 100? Maybe to in order to keep the score level. But I don't know if one, like doubling each each class is, is the best way. I've seen people talk about like, not necessarily doubling, but having a certain formula for doing it. Um, where it's kind of like one battleship to three cruisers to like uh maybe like five destroyers and then to like eight corvettes you know stuff like that it might be more efficient i don't know just when we're fighting fallen empires i just feel like these corvettes are just gonna get wiped and they are actually costing me a lot of energy we're down to 25 energy now if our fleet is mobile um so we we actually can't build too much more if we plan on like really moving out although we do have a good storage of energy so yeah all right that's gonna be it for this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll be back on monday with another one um sorry for the delay in episodes but yeah i don't see that gonna happen for another while at least for a while there oh holy shit guys we just fucking won roman empire has won the game by owning 40 percent of all habitable planets how did that just happen what changed we didn't integrate the Vagaros yet that it somehow happened Oh my god, I've actually I've never actually won a game of this before. This is the first time I've ever seen the screen. Damn. How did we do that? I didn't know like how did it change? We didn't take any plans apart from this one. But we didn't actually that we took that a while ago. So let's have a look at some of these stats. So 52 planets, 852 pops. 852 pops. We are massive compared to anyone else. 801 military fleets. And research, our research is super high. Research is actually quite even with the nation of Frackner is a or whatever they're called. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we get a research pact going with them. Um, we're obviously going to continue, don't worry. And we'll be back for the next episode. Um, is the Fallen Empire not included in this? No, these must be the starting people, I guess, that were, they're not really there anymore. I guess? I don't know. I don't know these two. I think I do know that one, but not this one. Oh, it might be over there. In this like bundle here actually yeah okay well we won i can't believe it but we actually won but we're going to continue and keep going just for a little while to see what happens with the fallen empires and obviously like we, we i didn't even get to this is called the utopia playthrough so we could play some utopia content and i never even got to it um but yeah i think the senate was just extremely effective in guiding me so that's how we did so well but there you go domination victory for the roman empire we'll be back with another episode on monday where we're going to see what we have to do with the Fallen Empires and see if we can fight off the Endgame Crisis. Alright, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll be back on Monday, as I said, about three times now. Uh, leave your comments, make sure you vote, and have a good weekend. See you guys.